uh, there was one game I remember I was standing on the, on the ice and just I just felt so anxious and 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 it was for I'm not the type of person that gets it for no reason and I'm like oh my goodness where is this coming from This is Sports Spectrum, bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Matt Duchesne, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you, sir? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks for being here on the show. Um, you have a, quite the career, my friend, in the NHL, 13 yeah. years. I thought a great place to start would be looking back to your debut. You were 18 years old. You were a kid coming into the NHL. Um, do you remember that first game and maybe a moment when you realized, oh, I'm here in the NHL. This is, this is different. This is not what, I, what I've been doing previously. Yeah, there's probably, when I think about that game, there's probably five moments that stick out to me. Um, and I remember them like yesterday, I think. Um, well, there's more than that, but during the game, because it was Joe Sackick's uh, retirement, Jersey retirement night, and he was my idol as a kid. And, um, you know, I got to meet him, I think, first time that night. And, um, yeah, just such an amazing time to have my debut uh, in the league. Um, but, yeah, I remember I took the opening draw of the game, and I'm like, hey, I, I – and it was on my weak side. Um, and I was just like, I can't lose this draw. It's my first draw in the NHL. I have to do whatever it takes to win. And as a rookie, you're never good at face-offs. I mean, that's one of the – it was the only year that I've been under, like, 52% in my career. I think I was 44% that year. And um, it takes you a minute to, to figure that out because guys are so good at it. Um, I ended up winning my first face-off, which was, which was huge. Um, I remember our first goal that game. I remember uh, over back-checking and leaving my guy, and they scored early in the first period. Um, <laughs> I remember getting my first point uh, that game. Um, and then I remember getting a breakaway and having a chance at my first goal and I missed, um, I might add two actually that game. I think I had two breakaways. So, um, yeah, but we won five, two at home against San Jose. And, um, I remember just playing against like Patrick Marlowe, Joe Thornton and Danny Heatley and just being like, like those guys were like the guys, like some of the guys growing up and just playing against those guys was just like, wow, this is, uh, this is wild. It's so funny. The memory of athletes we have a lot of athletes on this show from all sports and you might ask them a game from 10 <clears throat> years ago and in their mind they can go right back to it is there something about being an athlete you think that you just remember certain moments in specific games even just random games obviously that was your first game but just yeah. random games you know in the middle of a season like you know fifth year you know a game against this team and this time you could probably recall a lot that happened in that game yeah there was a point my memory is a lot worse than it used to be. I have, I, I have a really good memory. Sometimes it's borderline photographic actually. Yeah. Um, I'm a visual guy. Like, you know, when I was in school, I could remember my notes during a test. I can remember like where the stuff was on the page. And so I have a good memory with stuff. And um, since I've had kids, that is out the window. My brain just doesn't have enough room for, uh, for that <laughs> stuff anymore. I, I used to memorize a song after the third time hearing it. Now I can hear it like 10 times and not have a clue what the w words are, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. I, I think, you know, there was a time in my life where I could remember every goal I ever scored. Um, and then the day I realized I couldn't remember anymore is I saw a highlight from a game in Tampa and I scored a goal in that game and I had no recollection of it. Um, hmm. so yeah, as the years go on, you, uh, yeah, but there's definitely games that I, I, I could pick out probably, you know, if you say, okay, give me the month and the year I could tell you and the, the opponent, I could probably tell you something about those games uh, for the most part. There's going to, there's going to be a, a definitely a, a bunch that are going to, um, you know, kind of blend together and, and not stick out, but there's definitely ones that stick out. And, you know, we, you know, when, you know, you're on the road with you're, you're with the guys and sometimes like you'll stay overnight, you'll be up late with the guys, just, you know, shooting the breeze and um, you'll be talking about certain things that happen and something will pop into your head from like, for me, you know, like you said, 13 years, you know, something will pop in my head from like my second year in the league and it'll be a pretty funny story to share. It's always the 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 misses too. Like you talk to a pitcher and they're like, it's the pitch I didn't make or a hitter. It's the, the one strikeout in the game. Forget the three hits or the two homers. For hockey players, it might be, you know, I scored three goals, but I missed this chance for a fourth. It's that, right? It's the one you wanted that you didn't that you didn't quite get. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, um, you know, I think, I think when you're young, you remember, you, you know, you kind of feel like you're bulletproof and invincible and you know everything and you don't realize you're, you know, you have no idea what you don't know. So you're, you know, ignorance is bliss. I think you think more about the positives and probably in the last five to seven years, probably the last five, seven years for me, you know, as I got close to 30, turned 30, had kids, you feel like more of a mortal for sure. And, uh, um, you realize, uh, you know, you probably think more about your misses than your successes. And I think as you get older, then you kind of work through that and come back. I'm, I'm in that process right now to kind of get back to thinking about my successes more than my failures. And, um, yeah, I think the definitely, you know, have been dealing with that a lot the last few years. And, uh, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's exciting because it's a growth opportunity. And, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, and if you're competitive, you definitely, you want back what you missed, right. You don't necessarily, you know, for me, it's like when things go well, it's like, okay, what's next. Um, I've definitely got better at enjoying the, the, the moments, but at the same time, it's like, you know, obviously last year went well for myself and, yeah. um, pretty well for the team. But, you know, for me, it was like, soon as, as soon as we lost in the playoffs, it was like, okay, like I wanted to, I wanted to get right back to training camp. And, you know, I've been going kind of crazy in August here because I feel like I've been ready to go since the end of July. And, um, you know, it's a later training camp this year and it's just like, feels like the dog days right now. So, um, yeah, patience. Uh, patience is that kind of my word of the day every day right now. <laughs> As you started to have success, going back a little bit, we talked about that that you know eighteen year old kid coming into the NHL. But as you started to, you know, play a few years and have su some success and some achievement, such a young age, how do you think you handled that? When you look back, you know, I'm going to talk about your faith, and we're going to get into your faith journey in a second, and maybe this answer might intersect with that. But how do you think you handled success early on? Because a lot of young people, when they have achievement and a lot of people patting them on the back, uh, money comes their way. Sometimes they don't handle it so well. Yeah, I think there was ways I handled it beyond my years. And I think there was ways I handled it the total opposite. Um, money was never a thing for me. For me, it was always about being, you know, I wanted two things in life that money could buy. I was a Ford pickup truck and my and a cottage on Redstone Lake in Halliburton where is where I'm from from yeah that was it um I didn't know I remember telling a financial guy that we were my dad and I were hiring financial uh financial advisor my my first year and before my first year and I remember telling the guy with a straight face that I could live off 200 bucks a month and uh the guy laughed at me and I couldn't figure out why he was laughing at me <clears throat> I had no idea. I came from a small town. I had no clue. I mean, I was used to junior life, you know, eat, eat Quiznos and on a special occasion, maybe you're going to Applebee's at, or, or, you know, wherever, um, you know, whatever ch little chain restaurant was by our rink and back yeah. home. So I'm like, oh, you know, you had no idea about nutrition, nothing at that, that age. So I remember like, so that part I handled very well. Um, never let, never, you know, wanted that never didn't even know what a lavish lifestyle was. So I never had that kind of um, yearning for, for that part. For me, it was, I probably got two highs on the highs and lows on the lows as a young, because it meant so much to me. Like when I scored a goal, it was like, I, it was, or it was, or we won a big game. It was like the best day of my life. Right. And, right. You know, whenever I didn't score, you know, it bothered me um, no matter what happened in the result of the game. I remember, you know, I remember there was games where I should have been really happy because we won. Uh, or, and, you know, I probably was think I was thinking too much about um, my own performance and realizing that I, I, I failed that night individually. And instead of being able to let it go, I dwelled too much on it. It took me years to figure that out just because I'm so competitive and so driven. And it meant so much to me to play in the NHL and I wanted to be so good at it. Um, it took me a long time and obviously that rubs people the wrong way at times. And, um, it definitely came from an innocent and harmless place. And it came from a place that, uh, of somebody that, you know, always wanted to win, but, and that was, that, that was always important. So important. But, you know, for me, it was as a young player, you're trying to establish yourself. You're trying to get to, I, I was, I mean, I came in, I was a top six centerman right away. And it's like, okay, if I don't perform on a regular basis, this team can't win. Um, and I knew there was a lot of pressure on me and I, I probably didn't handle that. I didn't handle that pressure great off the ice. I handled it well on the ice because I made sure I took care of my business most of the nights and even the off season training, everything. I, I mean, hockey specific, I always handled it 
but off the ice, it took me a minute to realize, figure out the kind of social dynamic. And um, again, I, I mean, I was a very, you know, when we were talking about faith, I grew up very, a very Christian. I obviously, and then my, I was in a bit of a bu- bubble, um, didn't, didn't go to parties, didn't have much of a social life. It was hockey, hockey, hockey in school. Um, my mom was a guidance counselor and she, uh, she brought me up to really appreciate school and, and work hard at it, which was great. It's, I mean, great. That's the way it should be. And, um, always did well in school and, and, you know, I had no appetite really for anything else. And, um, it was just about making the NHL and making it at 18. That was always a goal. And, um, I always believed that that was my path. And I think I, I had such, uh, from day one, I've had such childlike faith in God, which is something I, I I feel like I'm, um, I I feel like it's a blessing. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, I think that definitely helped me along the way, but it also, you, you kind of, that part of it, um, I think, I think, some of that innocence i mean it does not prepare you for pro sports pro sports is a very harsh world uh, a locker room i think is the hardest social setting in it's got to be the hardest social setting on earth i mean you have uh, you have 20 some alpha males that can't be like if you if if you're an alpha and you and you act too much like an alpha the rest don't like you or don't respect that but you also can't be like you can't take a back seat you have right. to like, it, it is such a fine line. And as an 18 year old kid who had no social experience, that was something I struggled with. And um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely relied on my faith to kind of get me through that and not lose myself uh, while I'm trying to also fit in and learn that. And it took me years. I mean, it took me probably, you know, better part of five, six, seven years to really get it locked in. I think when I, when I kind of started to really understand it was probably around 25 years old and, and I started to really, okay, this is how I block out these feelings, put on the face, you know, do this, do that. Uh, it took me a minute for sure. And, and it was definitely uh, tough. It was, it was hard on me. So one more follow-up from what you just said. Um, did you get the pickup truck in the cottage on the lake? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> I got the pickup truck uh, my first year. Um, yeah. And I thought I was driving a Rolls Royce uh, <laughs> around. I, I still drive a pickup. I mean, that's all I, I ever really want for a vehicle um but uh and i got the cottage yeah i got we we bought a lot in 2012 and i drove in the driveway to a finished uh product in uh june 2016 so that was uh late may 2016 so that was really special it's it's uh it's a really special place for my family and i that's awesome matt duchene is our guest here on sports spectrum with the nashville predators uh, in the NHL, number 95, we are the intersection of sports and faith. So what is the intersection of hockey and faith in Jesus look like to Matt Duchesne? Ooh, yeah. You know what? I, I've had conversations with other Christians uh, before, and especially in hockey. And it's very hard to balance kind of the values you learn in your, your faith with the impulses, the lifestyle, the... Um, uh, nature of pro sports. Um, and I'm sure you've had this conversation with many people and it, you know, in terms of the off off ice or off field or whatever, even the on ice, it's like, you know, you have to be, it's a, everything's a, you're walking a tightrope and I'm a hundred percenter. I'm either in or out. Um, and I've had to learn how to be, you know, 75% this way and 25% this way and all everything in between. Um, you know, when you're on the ice and you're, you're, you're trying to be your best and you're being competitive and you're what, and and everyone has different ways they feel about themselves or different ways they look at things that make them their best. And for me, I need to be extremely confident and relaxed and calm. And it's like, you know, that's that the the relaxing calm and the has actually that part of it aligns with, with being Christian in terms of like letting God, my best games. It's like, I'm on autopilot. I use that word all the time. I, at last year I was on autopilot almost all, all year. And when I, my coach and I would talk and we would just talk about my game and stuff. And you know, whether he was, we were just talking or he was commending me or whatever. Um, I told him, I was like, you know what? Like you've given me an opportunity this year to just be in, on autopilot. I just put the gear on, I go out and the rest takes care of itself. So that part I, I've had to really work on because I'm a person that wants to grab the wheel and steer myself. And I've got to realize like, Hey, I've got all the tools and all the gifts and I've put in the work 
to make this thing happen. Now I just got to let it flow and let it happen. I've been a chronic overthinker. I've mm-hmm. dealt with severe anxiety that I um, fought for a lot of years, which actually ties into a lot of the, the stuff we were just talking about in terms of the social part. Um, yeah. Anxiety and being like just when things didn't go well, full, like just I wanted to crawl out of my skin. Um, and I've dealt with that in the last few years and it's helped me get to that point. Um, the hard part. So there's been a lot of my faith that's really helped me. And I, I had, some, when I started dealing with that anxiety issue, I, I had signs, I had things that happened along the way that made no sense to me at the time. Um, things just went so horribly wrong. That made no sense. It was like God telling me, I know it was God telling me like, Hey, you have this issue. We, you need to deal with this. And I know you like, and I had been told by people before, like, okay, I think this might be something going on, but I was like, no, like I wanted to deal with it myself. And I believe that I should be strong enough to deal with it. And sometimes you just can't yeah. and you got, you got to get help or you got to, you know, be treated a certain way or whatever to, to get through that. And, you know, he showed me the way through that. And that was a turning point for me. Um, it took a minute to really settle in and really learn you know, I didn't have right when I kind of got that part figured out. So, so to speak, I had a, I had a really tough year. I it was a COVID shortened year, played 34 games. I was hurt for seven and a half weeks. Um, I just, I couldn't find my rhythm. I couldn't find my place. I couldn't find the net. Um, it was just really tough. Had a really good playoff that year and that kind of set up last year, but yeah, it's been, it's been tough. So I, that part has been very in sync with my faith being like, okay, whenever I've kind of let go and let God, you know, things have gone, thing, things, you know, got better or improved. I would say that the hardest part about being a Christian in, in pro sport is finding that happy medium of fitting in with the guys and being that alpha where you're not over the top and you're not underneath fitting in that, that spot, because you kind of have to carry yourself a certain way that, you know, you know, the Bible talks about being humble and being, um, you know, obviously, um, oh, what's the word I'm trying to use here? I'll use one. Just, for How about tender-hearted? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. exactly. And and you can't be that way in pro sports, right? You can. I'll say this: hockey's come a long way, like a long way. Um, my, it's way easier now to come in as a young guy. It is way easier now to come in as a Christian. It's way easier to come in now as a, as somebody like oh, I've seen guys that come in that don't drink. Yeah. Um don't party, don't do any of that. It is way easier to come in now as that type of person versus at the start of my career. Um, hmm. Start of my career, there was just no acceptance for anything different. Now it's very much more kids. Kids can be themselves. You, There's understanding, oh, he's a kid. He's going to make these mistakes. When he makes mistakes, someone puts their arm around him and says, hey, like, this is, I just want to bring this up. This is how you do it. Don't do it like this. You know, I know you mean like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just want to, I had guys that dealt, had dealt with me that way, but I also had guys that, you know, crapped all over me at the same time. And I didn't know what I did wrong. I didn't understand why I was, and I felt, I just went to a shell and it, and it, you know, it, it, it was really hard and, and it makes you go the other way and keep making the same mistakes rather than feeling good about yourself and fixing things, if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah I mean, there's, there's a lot of being a pro athlete that, kind of goes against or the the norms of every day the things you see the things you hear um locker room talk stuff like that which a lot of it is super harmless and and it's camaraderie and at its core is is um a good thing but when you're looking at the subject matter and the, the language being used um it's not that way right and i'm i'm guilty i'm you know i'm i'm a pretty I'm a pretty, what you see is what you get guy. I swear I drink. I like, I like to have a good time, but sure. I'd never, I, I do it in a way that's like, you know, I, it, it, it comes from a good place. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? And like, I, I like to have a good time with people and, and be around people. I, I love people. Um, I love my neighbor as I love my, uh, as you know, that two rules, you know, love God with all your heart and love thy neighbor. You know, those two rules. I definitely, I follow those two rules and, um, that's kind of, I found my kind of niche in pro sports through that. That's fascinating to hear. Cause I think, first of all, what you said about the fact that it was very difficult in 2009, when you came in, 
to just even be a little different to whereas now it's more embraced, but you also talked about your anxiety and just dealing with that. And, you know, I think four or five years ago, that's probably something that people keep under the wraps in, in, a, in a professional sports world, especially like you said, with a bunch of alpha males in a locker room. But now I think because it's been one of those things where guys have been more open and especially after COVID where it feels like everybody was going through something during that time, uh, it's more well received. And I think talking about it actually probably helps. Maybe you've seen this when you talk about it, that other guys might say, you know what, I struggle too, or, you know, I'm a man of faith, but I'm also going through some difficult seasons of life. Has Have you seen that over these past few years and just being able to have more open dialogue on, for lack of a better word, deeper topics than just hockey, although hockey is the reason why you're there and the reason why your teammates are there. Yeah, you know what? I've been really blessed to play. The last two teams I've played on, uh, Columbus, even though it was for a very short time, and here in Nashville, just an extremely special group from top to bottom of guys um, where everyone was accepted, everyone was celebrated, everybody was loved by each other. Um, first good. of all, it takes, the, it takes the right people to be in that mix. You can't have some bad eggs. You can't have people. There, I, I, we've all played with those guys that walk in the room and everyone – goes on their heels and, and a wall goes up and people are not their best. We've all played with people that make you feel like that. And I have, it's been a long time since I felt that way, which is amazing. Um, I, I Columbus, I mean, I play with like, you know, we had, we had a good group of Christian guys there and we got together for chapel and we could talk openly about things. I was there again for a very short time, but guys like there's guys there I keep in touch with almost daily, even now. It's been almost four years since I was there. Yeah. And here in Nashville, I remember a few years ago, we had a kind of a core group meeting and I opened up about the anxiety thing. I just said, hey, like I want us to be a family and and I, to show that how much I mean that I want to talk about this and kind of share this with you guys. It's something that's not easy for me to talk about. It's very new. It's very, it's very, the realization of it's very new. Um, it's something I'm dealing with and I kind of laid it all out there found out another guy on the team that I never would have thought of uh, had dealt with panic attacks. Um, I was embraced so wholeheartedly and to the point where I can talk about it openly with teammates to this day. Like, like I had a couple, you know, I had a couple, I had a game, uh, I had a couple games two years ago where there was one game. I remember I was standing on, on the ice and just, I just felt so anxious and, and, and it was for, I'm not the type of person that gets it for no reason. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, where's this coming from? Certain things set me off. Um, It's, it's a, it comes from like feeling judged when I feel judged, that's where and judged poorly. That's, that's where it comes out. And that, that kind of stems from the, you know, early part of my career. And um, I remember standing on the bench and I, I almost passed out. Like I just, I almost, and I was able to tell one of our coaches at the time, because he and I were really tight and still are, he's still here. Um, former player, um, Danny Hino, um, Christian guy also. I remember talking to one of my teammates after the game about it. And to have that resource, like that's something 10 years ago, I never would have said anything to anybody. Mm-hmm. So to have that kind of, and we have a good group of Christian guys here that we can, I've had this conversation we're having right now with guys, like talking about like, you know, how to be a Christian, how to be a, a good, you know, kind of follow follow the path but also you know what what's harmful what's harmless what's good what's bad you know what i mean and yeah it, you know it, it it's tough it's really it's really tough to kind of balance so um but i'm just so grateful for this group we have and and the groups the, the last four years of my career i've been just really blessed to be around some just solid people whether they're christian or not you know just very understanding and very um accepting and 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 then guys come to me and talk to me about stuff. Like I've talked to guys about their guys have said stuff about how they felt and yeah. you know, whether, you know, all kinds of things I could tell, I don't want to t- tell too many stories about obviously my teammates and stuff they talked to me about, but you know, guys have come to me and like, and talk, cause they know like I, I've opened the door and they know my heart is open to them. And they know that um, I'm, it, it's a judgment free zone. Like somebody could come tell me the deepest, darkest secret of their, their life. And I just, there would be no judgment because I wouldn't want them judging me. And that's not the way things should go. You know what I mean? That's just not the way, like when we speak to God, God knows everything we've done, everything we think, everything we feel, we can come to him with anything. Mm. So why can't I, as a human who has no right to judge, 
be that. And that's how I look at it. Well, my brother, he's a pastor and he told me once, you know, in life we need, uh, you know, we're, we need a Paul, a Timothy and a Barnabas. I don't know if you've heard this before. And so, you know, Timothy to Paul was, you know, the sort of mentee, you know, and, and Paul was Timothy's mentor and teaching him the ropes. And then Barnabas was, was sort of the guy to do life with, with Paul. And if you're Timothy, you need a Paul in your life, right? An older person to mentor you. It sounds like you've been the Timothy. Maybe you still are in some ways, but right now you're kind of a Paul in the sense that you're a veteran guy on the team. And some of these younger guys are going to be coming to you and saying, Hey, help me through this, whatever it is. Most of the time, probably on ice, but now you have a chance to show people that there's more than just hockey, right? And that there's, you know, you're a dad now, as you mentioned to me when we first started, till two little ones, right? And so life is different than when you were 19, 20, 21, and you're able to be that mentor for some of these younger guys. Absolutely. I think I had several mentors. Some were really, were really good all the time. Some were good at times and not at others. Um, for me, I just tried to pick up – I tried to pick up – I. I didn't have one for a long period of time and I wish I had had somebody that I could really lean on for about four or five years early on. And that spoke, you know, kind of, you know, we did a big thing. We have an amazing sports psychologist here in, in town um, that works with our team. She works with Vanderbilt. She works with us. The guys love her. And we did a thing last year. And I think, and this is something I had done with uh, somebody close to me. um, Another, you know, kind of, faith mentor and very tight good friend from back home she's she's um she's got kids older than me so she's quite a bit older than me but um she did me and my wife's wedding like she's just been a really good faith mentor for me and yeah when i was younger she taught taught me about love languages and they are and then so last year we did a uh a quiz on what's your love language with the group so right away like I'm laughing because I'm like, love language sounds like the most touchy feely <laughs> kind of feminine, yeah. uh, not macho, not athletic, not like, you know, like not unmanly thing in the whole world, but it is one of the most important things that you can know about yourself and know about others. Yes. And so when we did it, I already knew what mine was. And when we did it, guys were like kind of shocked guys were we were talking about it that's how far we've come. And it's amazing. And, you know, for, for listeners that, uh, that, you know, don't know the love languages, basically it's how you accept and how you give love. And sometimes your, you know, your partner. So my wife and I have two totally different love languages. Mine so too. you have two of them. Yeah. You have a one, a, and a, you have a one, a one B right. or a one, two. What are yours? And what are yours? Mine are uh, words of affirmation is number one and touch would be second. Same. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's common. I think with a lot of guys, I think so. And so and a lot of women quality time is number one. And so my wife is, is quality time and acts of service. Acts of service. So like, yeah. yeah. So, um, like I could tell her how beautiful she is a thousand times a day. It doesn't mean anything. She tells me I look good once I'm walking on a <laughs> cloud the rest of the day. Right. And, right. Yes. You know, quality time. I enjoy spending time with her, but like, you know, if I want to go golfing, over like just sitting in the house with her, like I'm probably going to go golfing, right? Like that's, that's just like what it is, yeah. you know? And if she does, makes me dinner, I'm grateful, but I'm not like, if I, if I do anything in the kitchen, it's like the best thing in the world. You know what I mean? So anyway, I think like I, that part of it, I try and, and you can really pick up on people's love languages if you were paid enough attention. And for me, you know, I don't, people didn't know how to talk to me early on. They could have got a lot more out of me as a young person if they knew how to talk to me and how to empower me. I'm a person that needs to be empowered because I already am hard on myself. I already put pressure on myself. So if you could, if you condemn me or are too hard on me, I go too far the other way to the point where it shuts me down. Sure. Um, I can handle it and I can get through it, but it doesn't bring out the best. Um, you learn to be mentally tough that way because hockey's not a touchy feely. Pro sports is not touchy feely. You're not told how great you are all the time. Right. Um, doesn't happen. You're told both, right? And, um, mostly how bad you are, <laughs> how many times you mess up, what you need to so fix. Exactly. That's, exactly. So I had people that kind of knew how to talk to me, whether they knew it or not. They just felt it. You know, I look at a guy like Danny Briere, um, who I played with in Colorado. I only played with him for a year, but I, that was a tough year for me at times, and he was. I was struggling with some off ice stuff, just like, you know, 
um, some of the stuff we talked about, I had some, I made some mistakes. I handled myself the wrong way at times and he saw me for who I was and he knew my heart and knew where it was coming from and never judged me, never condemned me, never thought poorly of me. He just picked me up and he helped me get through it. He helped me understand maybe other guys I was playing with and how to, you know, kind of open my eyes to that. So now, you know, so that's when I was Timothy. Now, I think now in terms of mentors, we have a group of guys that help each other that we're all around the same age. There's no one older that I like necessarily look up to sure. really that I, because I'm kind of Pecorine a little bit, obviously, because he was the only guy that was quite a bit older than me um, and had more experience than, than I did just in terms of games played and been in the league. Just a great person handles himself. Well, everything you hear about him is kind of the gospel on him, but um we kind of do it by committee now and, and it's really special that we have a group that can help each other. So if I'm going through something, you know, I can, I can go to Roman Yossi or Ryan Johansson or Philip Forsberg or Colton Sissons or, you know, whoever and say like, Hey, like I'm feeling this or like, whatever, like, what do you think of this? Whether it's hockey related, whether it's off ice, anything, they can come to me. Like, you know, Yossi and I have gotten really close because we we've, we've opened the door to each other to be like, Hey, I'm dealing with this can you help me or like, not, can you help me? But like, what do you think? Like, or just even just sharing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes just saying it is, is enough. Right. So that's been, that's been so awesome. And, and that's where, and then with the young guys, we talked together. I remember last year, one of our, our, our young first rounder who, um, you know, we had a deep team. So he kind of fell a little bit further down the lineup than he probably would on another team. Yeah. Uh, our coach was going to healthy scratch him and it was really nothing that he had done. It was just, he wanted to play a different guy against a certain team. He called uh, Johansson Forsberg and myself into the room and talked to us about like, Hey, I'm going to do this. I need you guys to, you know, kind of pick him up or whatever, make sure he knows like, cause it, I, I can, and it, so much credit to, to our coach about uh, for doing this because, you know, the coach can tell him something all day long, but when it comes from us, it's, it, it's different. It comes from a different voice. Sometimes you need the coach to tell you something for it to be believable. And sometimes you need, players to tell you and your peers so that was like where you, we got to be the Paul right and we got to embrace that so mm. I think we just have such a great group at kind of sensing that being you know Paul's to each other and then being Paul's to um the young guys and the the, the other guys coming up so it, it's really fun it's really fun to share those experiences that's really good Matt um Last question I got for you really is just kind of a question we throw away, if you will, but it's not a throwaway question because I think it's an important one to reflect on. Where God has you right now, and we asked this to a lot of our guests here, where God has you, um, what's he teaching you? What's the big lesson you know, that he's showing you in the life that you have right now? You said you're a dad to two little ones, right? And you got your wife and sort of a different season of life, certainly than when you first started as a hockey player. What's the Lord showing you right now? What's he been teaching you? Ooh. Yeah. Um, I've gone through a lot of growth the last couple of years. Um, my life off the ice and last year, my life on the ice was exceptional. Um, you know, my kids are my world. My wife is amazing. I've got a baby on the way right now. Um, you know, my family, my dog, like my friends, just my teammates. Like I said, I play in Nashville. It's the best city in the world. Yes. We love it here. This is home forever. Mm -hmm. um, for us, there's so much going on, but then there's the, the side of me that there's so much unfinished business in my career. And, you know, I've been, there's, there's, uh, you know, I, I live with, I think we all live with regrets and things we'd want to do over. I definitely do. I think all of us, we, you think about your messes, like we talked about, yeah. definitely think about certain things that I did in the past or, or whatever. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not very good at forgiving myself. I hold that against me. And, and I've been dealing with a lot of that. I deal a lot. I deal with that mostly in the summer because there's not a game or a practice or the, there's not something to put your attention on and be like, you know, it's kind of like, you're kind of, you reflect and you kind of look at everything and you look at where you want to go, where you've been, you know, it's very tough to be in the moment. And when I said patience earlier, Mm -hmm. I think that's what that I, if there was a word God was whispering to me each and every day right now, it'd be patience, patience, patience. I'm hopefully on my way to where I want to go. I'm not there yet. Um, I know what I want to achieve. I know what I want to do. I don't have as many years as I once did to do it. 
it's okay. The lessons and the failures from before are going to help me have the best chance of achieving the thing of those things. Who knows if I do, if I ever achieve, if I get to the, to get to do what I want to do, win a Stanley cup, you know, and on and on and on. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. And I think that's where it's like, I got to surrender, know that he's given me the tools and he's giving, still giving me the tools and the lessons to achieve those things. He's still giving everything I'm going through right now. And I look, I look back at it. I, I remember there was times a couple, like a year ago or two years ago where I said to my dad, I would say, God has his hands all over this right now because what is happening makes no sense. Right. It doesn't make sense. It, the puck will not go in the net. I cannot be successful no matter what I do, how well I play. There's some reason for it. God has his hands all over it, and I just have to be patient and let it come to me. And it did. Short term, obviously, but it's the same thing. So that would that would be – that would be the the number. And I love talking about this right now because I don't know if I've said this. Out, I haven't said this out loud. I've been kind of trying to figure out the next step and figure out how to deal with these feelings and these, you know, st- dreams I'm having at night, things I'm thinking about. Um, I got a lot going on mentally right now and for good and, and, you know, trying to get better with. And, yeah. you know, patience is that, that one word that I, that I kind of got to have and just everything in its time and, it, and it's all in God's time. And that's all I can really, I can really do. So, um, you know, you want to just, again, I, like I said, I want to just grab the wheel, drive the car where it needs to go. And when you believe in yourself, you believe you can do that, but there's no one greater than him. And there's no one that has the, his, your, your life and plan in their hands other than him. So that's kind of where I'm at. Well, there's a pretty famous song from a woman who's married to a former hockey player and it's called Jesus take the wheel. And that's kind of what yeah. you're saying, right? It's like, Hey, yeah. There's a lot when you know it's a song that everybody can sing and knows the words to, but when you really think about your own life, that's what it is. It's literally taking the hands off the wheel yourself and saying, "Okay, God, I got to be patient here because I can't do this." You know, you're the one that's in charge here, not me. So, good stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. No, I think just to add to that, I think there's, I think there's times where he tells you to grab the wheel. Okay, hey, you're you're ready. Grab it. Go. Like. Right. You know, we all, as pro hockey players, you go through this anxiety and we all do it. You ask yourself a thousand times a day in the summer, am I ready for the season? Am I in shape? Am I going to have a good year? There's always that fear of complete. We all have that like nightmare. I know for a fact, we all have that nightmare of the first day of camp feeling like, oh my goodness, I didn't work hard enough. I didn't do the right things. I didn't, it never happens ever because that fear drives you the right way. So it's like, you know, that's where you let go and you say, and that's where I used to be a mess in the gym. I always felt like I wasn't working hard enough. Now it's like, and so I'd even work too hard and I would be exhausted come season. Now you do a little bit less mentally. You just check in, check out. G- Jesus got it. We're good. And then when training camp starts, Hey, you done the work, grab the wheel, son, take it and take it and go. Right. He's you know, so you. You. absolutely. So I think the like, I, there's such a give and take of, Hey, he's got the wheel. All right. Now you grab the wheel. Now he give it to him. You know, it's like driving across country with your wife. You gotta, you can't drive the whole way. You gotta sleep at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that drive myself, my friend, Matt, this was a, this was a real pleasure and a real treat to talk to you. A lot of fun and, and a deeper conversation, I think, than I, I thought we would go, but I'm glad we went there. Um, I always think it's better to be as transparent as you can. And Quite frankly, uh, I could talk all day with you about on ice stuff, but I really love to talk to people about what's going on, you know, away from the ice and certainly in their walk with the Lord. So thanks for uh, thanks for being here. All the best to you, and hopefully we'll we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. I uh, I really enjoy sharing my story because if it can help anybody out there and help anyone in my shoes or that's going to be in my shoes at some point, uh, I'm happy to do it. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.